Thank you. Right, uh, we're going to move to the another hospital, yeah. Samsung Medical Center. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Great. Great to see you. Yeah. Welcome so, to Samsung Medical Center. All right. So we have many distinguished uh, panel here. So Maurice, yeah. Gary, and Dr. Gu, and yeah. Rubat. And so, okay. Uh, we'll just start to uh, introduce the cases and yeah. your colleagues. First, okay. So first of all, I really appreciate for inviting us, inviting our center to uh, TCTAP. Uh, thank you for that, and Dr. Park. And uh, my name is Hyun Chul Kwang from Samsung Medical Center. And uh, this is uh, 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 Ju Yong Han from our center, and uh, Tae Kyu Park, our junior uh, intervention colleague. And we invited the IVUS interpreter, uh, Dr. Sang Woo Kim from Jungang University Hospital. And uh, Dr. Ju Yong Han will uh, present uh, today's case. Hi, I'm Ju Yong Han. Uh, a, let me introduce our case. A 72 year old male was referred to our hospital due to recently aggravated chest pain. He had received medical treatment <coughs> due to stable ischemic heart disease for two years. Uh, actually, PCI was performed for RCA and OM lesion six weeks ago. He had hypertension and was an ex-smoker, and he was a 72-year-old male Asian patient. Echocardiography showed normal LV systolic function. Treadmill test, which was performed after the first PCI, was positive at 5.6 mats. So, Angiogram. Yeah. Um, Let me show a coronary angiogram of this patient. Uh, this angiogram was performed at, uh, six weeks ago, and we could find a very tight stenosis in mid RCA. And there was a chronic total occlusion lesion in obtuse marginal lesion, and another tight stenosis, uh, another OM lesion. Next. From mid LAD to distal left main, diffuse atherosclerosis up to 90% with severe calcification, and there is myocardial breaching in mid LAD segment. Uh, we fixed uh, mid RCA lesion and obtuse marginal lesion, and 3.5 by 38 DES was implanted in mid RCA, and POPA was performed for OM lesions. This is uh, the angiogram after the first PCI. Okay, I will have to show the, the today's uh, uh, angiogram. Angiogram on the screen, please. One quick question. What's the patient's creatinine? Angio screen room. Okay. Today, this is our cranial view. You can see uh, the uh, calcification in each side of the coronary artery. That means uh, we have a severe calcification in diffuse disease. Next. Okay, apicodal view showed a significant disease in the circumflex ostium. Not very severely calcified, it is a spot calcification in the, the left side of the coronary uh, proximal circumflex. Uh, the, uh, the length is uh, longer than 5 mm. Actually, the EBC recommends the, the, two, uh, the aggressive treatment for the lesion more than 5 mm. So, this is the case. Next. This is epicranial. There is another challenge point here. We have a diagonal, yeah. diseased, small, diffuse. Uh, it's, it is not stentable, but uh, looks like important diagonal. Next. Uh, spider view, next. Okay, stop. So uh, let's let's the uh, K 
Can you show the slide presentation on the, on the screen? Okay, next. Our plan is the target lesion is left main purification calcified. So our plan is rotablation followed by tap technique. Mm -hmm. And the next. The, so learning point here is optimal stand technique for left main. Also, I think it's very important to, to protect the side branch that is not stentable, how to deal with it. Next. So our uh, technique is, uh, today's technique is a tap technique. There are a lot of discussion about which is the uh, best uh, to stand technique. Actually, I believe that the best to stand technique is the technique you are familiar with. So we are uh, one of the first report of the tap technique, the, the working with Italian doctor, uh, the Brusota, and we are almost about more than 90% 90, 90 cases we are doing tap technique for the bifurcation. Next. Actually, there are a lot of discussions between one stand, two stand technique in left main bifurcation. But recently, the COVID-2 and the excellent registry analysis show that in second generation DES era, the two stand is uh, at least equivalent to one stand technique. So we are free to uh, select any technique. Next. So the moreover, in left main bifurcation, in the same paper, we found that in second generation DES, there is a trend of a better result in two-stand technique. The compared to one-stand technique, you can find the, the very contrary result. So I think two-stand technique for this lesion is uh, reasonable. Next. I think more challenging issue is that how to protect the diagonal. So I think a major cause of the side compromise technically is the state of expansion in the uh, main vessel osteum. Next. So, Maybe you are familiar with the proximal optimization, and I like to say that we need a disoptimization. The optimal size, the conservative stenting, the distal to the uh, diagonal, and the proximal optimization will uh, get a, uh, enough stent expansion. That's our plan. So I like to hear the opinion from the panel. Thank you for hearing. Um, one question: uh, Do you have the patient's creatinine? Creatinine 0 0.8, quite clear. Gosh. Any opinion, suggestion? Okay, good. Uh, you know, we have already, you know, uh, you would see the two, the other technique, you know, cool load yeah. technique, and kind of yeah. a micro crossing kind of T-stand technique and really, you know, okay. I want to see the tap technique you yeah. ex explain. Okay. Go so, ahead. yeah, I, I believe that tap technique, there is uh, some kind of a crisis after stand in the main vessel. The, the wiring, the side branches are sometimes not so easy. But after that, I believe that tap technique is the most simple, simplest technique and the most predictable technique. Good. So, uh, Please enjoy our uh, tap technique. So first of all, I like to uh, rotablation for LAD. I so, uh, uh, we have uh, Sangu Kim, Dr. Sangu Kim. Can you show us the IVAS? And uh, meantime, I like to start the, okay. the rotablation for LAD. Good morning, Buju. Good morning. I'll show us the IVAS finding of a cell complex force. IVAS program started at the mid cell complex. Here is the middle cell complex. So middle cell complex is normal. Basal size is 3.5 millimeter. I'm going to the proximal cell complex. Lumen is okay, however, negative remodeling is here. There's some calcification, not heavy. However, here, this is the, this portion it shows the heavy calcification also in mid proximal cell complex. I'll go to the proximal cell complex more. Lumen is okay. Yeah, optus marginal branch is coming from 6 o'clock. Proximal cell complex shows a positive remodeling. And this version plaque shows an attenuated plaque. Minimal lumen area is 2.6 square millimeter. Mm -hmm. 
This person is so complex osteum. I think it's really dangerous when you put a stand at, at the proximal s u l c o m p l e x We need to be careful for the PCI this, this side. And this left main is coming from the 12 o'clock. This is the distant left main. Distant left main is also calcified. What is speed? Okay. So let me summarize. s u l c o m p l e x o s t e o m has a severe disease also, negative remodeling and positive remodeling, a t e n u a t e plaque, and also severe calcification. Okay. And then I'll show you left main also. Left main? r e a d y Ah, you don't tell me. Be a bit. So she d o t e t I'm so c a t e t c a t e t e r c o u l d n t enter the proximal LED. We just make a uh, left main i v s exam. This person is a distal left main, s u p e r f i c i a l calcification. Lumen size is about 4.5 millimeter. So t h i s is moderate to severe okay. atherosclerosis okay. here. And this portion is mid left main. b e s t e size is 5.3 millimeter. Okay. The, however, the, we could not examine the LED because of the Tight stenosis. Mm-hmm. This may be better to have an, to have a IVC mm-hmm. exam again after a lot of later. Mm-hmm. What do you think about IVC finding? Okay. Dr. Gary is there. Well, I mean, first of all, the left main mm-hmm. is diseased, mm-hmm. but it's not stenotic, and the disease seems to extend most of, mm-hmm. of its length. Um, the thing that worries me most mm-hmm. about the circumflex is the attenuated plaque in the proximal vessel, so, which has a higher frequency of distal mm-hmm. embolization. It doesn't mean you'll always get distal embolization. Mm-hmm. It just has a higher mm-hmm. frequency, and it's something you have to keep mm-hmm. in back of your mind. Um, and the circumflex is a big artery. Dr. g o n can yeah. you hear me? I'm One. here. Dr. g o n Yeah. Okay, what sure. size part do sure. you use? Sure, I can hear you. What size? Uh, I, I like to start at 1.5. 1.5, right. Actually, in rotablation, I uh, like to have a p o r t o a r t e r y ratio up to one, one point, uh, 0.5. Mm-hmm. Uh, under 0.5, there will be a stent under expansion. Mm-hmm. But the lesion is tight, so my usual start p o r t size is 1.5. And the uh, artery size is more than 3.5. I like to upsize to uh, 1.75. Okay. Okay. Right. Plural. So I have a resistance in the here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This RPM is 180. Mm-hmm. But I have a resistance. So. But uh, fortunately, we don't have uh, any hypotension or bradycardia. Usually, mm-hmm. I don't use a temporal pacemaker until I have a bradycardia. But Fortunately, in this case, uh, we don't have any hypertension in blood cardia. Left side r o t a b l a t i o n is going to be okay. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so... Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we got the energy. f l o r o Polish run. Okay. And the floral test. Dust test. Okay, we didn't lose the diagonal. So I like to uh, check the IVAS first. Then I, uh, decide, I will decide that the, the, you need to upsize the bore or not. Okay? Mm. <laughs> Okay, f l o r a Yeah. Dynamic light mm-hmm. and the uh, test over. Okay, g o o d job, now. Good job. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Micro Micro. 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 So recently I'm running the, the Rotablation Learning Center and so I found that uh, many operators uh, don't use the DynaGlide when uh, they insert uh, the Rotaburr rota into the coronary, uh, uh, into the platform. Actually, uh, uh, it will be, it will be, it will be uh, very convenient to be there. You will never mm -hmm. use the guiding catheter to the wire during, mm -hmm. uh, when you use the DynaGlide when you insert the Rotaburr. Uh, actually, so we can. Uh, okay, and I will. I'll go, yep. Yeah. All right. We I don't have any you know, <laughs> database. It's yes. Experiential base yes. is I. Uh, the, I right. would like to more, you know, slower back and forth to break down the calcific yeah. lesion. Oh, Sometimes yeah. it's you know, the speed of uh, rotation is a little bit you know slow down in the case of uh, uh, you know heavy calcification. Yeah. Yeah. So. I prefer, personally prefer as more slower back and forth, back Flush. and forth, that is, uh, you know. Flush. Right. right, especially yeah. when there is some resistance, you know, gentle movement may better, true, and true. so when it, sometimes it gets stuck somewhere mm -hmm. and difficult to remove. Right, right. So uh, usually Japanese doctors uh, uh, prefer high speed and very rapid packing motion. Yeah. In other country, it's a slower, that it's quite various, various. All right. Uh, yeah, but there is no uh, comparison, so we, we cannot right. say right. which right. Uh, uh, is operator-dependent uh, procedure. Experience-based. Uh, yeah. But anyway, you have to be very careful, especially for angulated these. Yeah. We're seeing a difference in technique. The first case they did today, there was a lot of calcium. The IVUS catheter would not go, yeah. and they decided not to rotate and just go with high-pressure inflations. Here, the IVUS catheter wouldn't go. Yeah. And he decided uh, to go with rotablation. Uh, so we, we there are many ways to go about yeah, doing it. I just time, think so like those IVUS makes IVUS it easier. On live. IVUS of the other Screen IVUS. Okay. Screen IVUS. Can you see the IVUS? IVUS. Uh, okay. Yes, now we can see it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Good. From yeah. the mid LED. IVUS probably started at the mid LED. Diamond operation is coming in. Okay. From the second diagonal, yeah. Uh, there is a calcium and reverberation artifact yeah. there is subject so, calcification. So when you see these multiple concentric reverberations yeah. like that, that's from rotational mm. atherectomy. That's when the calcium gets polished yeah. um, by the rotoblader mm. burr, and therefore the ultrasound bounces mm -hmm. back and forth between the transducer and the calcium each mm. time, causing a, another reflection. It's like you're looking at one mirror in front and one mirror in back of you. And that's typically seen only with um, rotational atherectomy. Okay. okay, left main, osteum. Okay. So, Dr. Kim, can you just show us one of the reverberations just so the audience can see? Just stop. Okay, it. absolutely. Okay, I show the typical reverberation artifact after rotoblator. Yeah, um, you know, Here? This, this is one, you can see it very nicely. Um, so, uh, my question is uh, do we need uh, the upside, do we need to upsize the rotoblader? The distally, this is size of 3.0, but uh, it's uh, not clear in this IVUS, but the still the distal size is larger than uh, 3.5 in the proximal LED, and there are huge napkin ring, more mm -hmm. than napkin ring, uh, 360 degree calcification, and that. I'm not sure we can have an optimal standard expansion approximately without uh, upsizing the burst burr. What's your opinion, Dr. Park? Encircling calcium is clear, so however, the minimum lumen diameter is almost 1.752. Uh, so I think it's, you got, you know, first uh, 1.5, uh, you know, modification of a plaque, and then uh, I would like to use a non compliant balloon high pressure inflation, maybe 2.75 or 2.5, quite enough, and then. I want to do the stem procedure. So, what, so what your opinion is uh, I don't need to upsize the burr? I think if you saw that de novo, you would want to rotoblade it. Uh, so I think I'd, I'd use another burr. 
So what, what would you do? Have to go. I, I guess one thing you could do. I, I, yeah, I, I like I, to upsize the board, actually. I like to do that. But uh, it, it, it's, can, it's debatable, I think. Mm -hmm. I think there is risk of a perforation in media LED. Mm -hmm. I think you could so upsize the bear, but one other option would be to take a compliant balloon at low pressure, and if it inflates nicely, then you probably don't need to upsize. If you see a significant waste on it, on the, uh, a compliant balloon under low pressure, then probably you do need to do more rotational atherectomy. Okay. Uh, anyway, I prefer to upsize the bear. Okay, uh, there is a risk, but uh, vessel size of 3.0, there is uh, no disease at all. So I prefer the stent uh, full expansion. Using a bigger bar? A bigger bar? Actually, you can do that low uh, pressure balloon rot rotor link. on the rotor wire, so you don't can, can really you waste show much it here? time. Screen? Yeah, I already exchanged it, exchanged it to 1.2. Seven five. What? One point seven five. It's true one, that the calculation is really uh, completely circular. Night night college. Floor. Yeah, the truss. Pressure on bottom. Oh, it's pressure in a uh, you know. Water pressure. Uh, to the pressure. Flush. 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 Uh, we have to it's be cutting. careful about that. This little you know micro a little bit yeah. further yeah. and more. Uh, I think it's a slower back and forth. And oh. You know, rotoblader is one of those procedures where if you asked three interventionalists, you would get five opinions. <laughs> what um, was wrong with that? You know, we almost only three and use five. a single burr, and that's based on uh, 20 years of experience um, in which what you're trying to do is modify the most superficial elements of calcium, which are the toughest and the most resistant. And so usually if you get reasonable ablation, like you saw here by ultrasound, um, with a single burr, we would typically stop. Um, but of course, we yeah. would Superman. always predilate, and that allows us to test whether or not things expand nicely. And if it doesn't, then you can always upsize. Um, you know, on the other hand, if you started your case at this point, um, yeah, except that, you know, you've already done rotary plaque, yeah. right? Yeah. And you've already modified the plaque somewhat. Floral. Because you never get rid of calcium. Even if you image after 175, it's not going to look much different. Right. And that doesn't mean you go to a 2.0. Yeah. I totally, totally agree with that. Yeah. Just the modifying the plaque. Yeah. Okay. It's also interesting that after a 1.5 burr, you have areas that are 175 to 20 in terms of MLD. And that's also been an observation um, that goes back 20 years. I can tell you. I can tell you. Okay. We start at 150. Okay. Loro. Red cardia. Okay. okay. Broad cardia. Yeah, 환자분. 기침하세요. <coughs> 기침. Yeah, I'm doing the cough CPR. Okay. okay. Floro. Test. Yeah, we have done have no yeah, flow. Uh, uh, most of embolization the is uh, uh, occurred yeah. during yeah. the last passing the burr. That's why the angel, that's the cine. Sorry, <laughs> cine. Okay, polish run, floral. Okay, okay. Correct. Yeah. Brady, Brady again. Let's go. Brad Cardia. Brad Cardia. Kitchen Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Getting bigger, bro. Anyway, the distal embolism. Right. 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 Right.
so <laughs> I'm showing there's some trouble. <laughs> and, uh, another issue is, is that we can make uh, some periprocerebral you know, CK yeah. enzyme elevation. She can be right. Yeah. So let me check if there is a right. slow flow or not. Don't turn back to the pages. Don't throw back to the pages. Okay. Yeah, can test. Yeah, can test. Okay. Should be. Sure. Don't throw one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, fortunately, we don't have a very severe complication. So. Uh, I mean, don't throw it. Right. Still there, right. Yeah. So the, one of the reasons why I aggressively ablate the lesion is that uh, I don't like to lose the, the diagonal. The, there are many predictors of side ridge occlusion, but there is no very good procedure predictor how to protect the side branch. Gelled wire, that, that was uh, negative in our COVID registry. Predilatation was negative in our registry, mm -hmm. but positive uh, protect the side branch in the randomized trial, which was done in uh, 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 Spain. Pan, uh, Pan. Uh, Dr. Pan, by Dr. Pan. So only predilatation is the protective to side branch technically, but uh, you don't like to predilate it. It is diagonal, right? right? So I think only thing I can do is the, the debulking. That's the only way. I'm not sure it's working or not, but uh, I think it is the, the only way. Another way is that just I presented the, the uh, stent less aggressively, uh, the LED. So yeah. why Hannah does the same? Why clip to go? So Dr. Bach, so that the now actually we are more frequently use the rotablation or debulking procedure than before, you know, especially with the BRS. Do you think that you did a lot of DCA you know, 10 years or 15 years ago? Do you think there is a chance that the DCA will survive or revive? I, I personally, I, uh, I like the DCA, right? Mm -hmm. uh, however, in the area of a bare metal stand, actually, actually the how much debulking is important, right? The degree of debulking uh, can influence the long-term outcomes. And so much, much black powder removed, and then Bermuda stand can make a cl good clinical outcome. However, in the year of a Drugilton stand, the, you, you know that any stand procedure, the rail loss is a 0 0.2, 0 0.25, you know, intimate growing is almost the same. Don't we don't need a, you know, debulking effect in the year of a, you know, Drugilton stand. The reason why uh, Gary suggests just, you know, modification of a plaque uh, quite enough, and we can do the, any procedures. You know. Boy, that's an interesting question. And, um, you know, just about every Japanese interventionalist that I know has a couple of DCA catheters in their office. Um, but it's not available. I mean, it's not made. Uh, uh, I presume that Abbott has the, um, the, the patent rights to, re to manufacture it if they wanted to, but that's a major, major effort to you know, restore manufacturing of a fairly complicated device. I think it's probably so more likely that... the lesion with 3.0, 20 millimeter euphora, I think uh, they insist that this metronic, this, they insist that the re-wrapping profile is best. <laughs> I'm not sure, but uh, they insist that. I think in the bifurcation, we need to uh, uh, re-cross the uh, bifurcation many times. Sometimes many times I prefer just once epicranial. Uh, so the wrapping profile is very important to me. Would you protect the diagonal wires for, before the main uh, stand? Actually, I, I don't like to do that. All right, so you, there are some a small ones, but, I like to make but it the, the disease segment of uh, diagonal osteum, and if you look at the angle, it's not too steep, and so right. disease diagonal angle. branches, the angle is shallow, yeah. so maybe, you know, uh, compromised. Right. The, uh, Deflation. So many people believe that the gelled wire technique will protect the uh, side branch. But in our study in COVID-2 registry, it published in Jack by Dr. Han here, uh, we didn't find uh, the inflation eight, uh, find uh, any difference. 
between gelled wire process and gelled wire. Uh, so I like to simplify the procedure. Well, you can see the balloon yeah, cannot uh, be dilated even after 1.75. Dr. Uh, Wen, if, uh, if you were yeah. speak, yeah. speaking, I'm, I, I'm remembering uh, that you found also that having a gel wire is a predictor of reopening an occluded vessel. Yeah. Right, right, right. So it's not protective, gel but very protective, useful right. in case of occlusion. Uh, Which, uh, I don't yeah. like to lose the diagonal, but uh, I think the ballooning, the side uh, diagonal is nearly impossible. The first of all, Contra there is a dissection here. Right. And okay. the balloon is perforated can we see, at the 14 atmosphere. Can, can, somebody do, can we see a Sizer? test injection? Because there's now some extra... Okay, okay right. good. Right. Uh, maybe... Uh, yeah. Interim yeah. neural yeah. or the yeah. extra neural. Yeah. 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 The diagonal bridge, yeah. now it's all only you know, TV yeah. one or two. Yeah. 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 I think it's, it's compressed by the hematoma or the dissection flap. Diagonal... Yeah. Disappear? Yeah. Will disappear. Yeah, hematoma, due to hematoma. The same size? Yeah, 3.0. Really? Actually, I try to avoid this kind of complication by the upsize in the bar. Still, uh, it was not enough. So, you, uh, sometimes I use a 2.0 balloon. 2.0 balloon. Yeah, 2.0 bar uh, in the very large uh, the personal LED. In balloon? In balloon? Okay, NC, Joe. NC, NC. for a... NC. 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 Okay. I will choose uh, the tougher balloon, NC. So I guess the patient doesn't complain any symptom, even the diagonal is occluded. Yeah. Can Can you can you please please can you? Can you? Yeah, oh. he has no chest pain. So no chest pain. Is it, it's not a big deal, right? Yes, I guess <laughs> right. so. Diagonal right. Right. <laughs> but... Uh, Uncomfortable. <laughs> right. Oh, it's real. Not a good image. Yeah, 15. Yeah. It's a, the 3 0 15 millimeter NC Euphora NC balloon. I hope uh, this will not perforate, rupture. So, okay, here, inflation 14. The after perforation and the after we have a hematoma, it's not wise to get the angiogram many times. 14? 14? 14? 18? 18? 18? 20? 20. Still <laughs> deflation. Okay. Test this high side very slowly. Okay. Again, inflation. 14, 14, 16, 16, okay, deflation. We would like to put the uh, two stents from uh, LED to uh, proximal, uh, this mid to be, this proximal LED. 18, mm -hmm. the size of 28. Well, why don't you check angiogram? Angiogram, slowly, slowly, okay, yeah, we got uh, some flow in the diagonal. So, 32, 32, 30, it's okay? Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I like to use a synergy stand. The only because it's uh, uh, mostly visible. The four tap technique, the, the, the clearly see the stand strut is very important because you, you don't like to pull the stand too much. Dr. Kim, uh, 3 stent is okay for mid LED vision? 3 0 yeah, 3 0 3 0 digital yeah. mid LED, do you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah it looks fine. Yeah. Okay. However, approximately, we need a bigger, larger. Okay, larger. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So approximately, do we need a 3.5 or 4.0? Dr. Kim? Kim? So uh, basically, the distal left main is larger, the lumen, side, lumen diameter is 4.5. Mid so answer is, answer is 4.0. 4.0, really? Oh, yeah. And approximately, do you think it can uh, accommodate the 4.0 stand? Yes, really? I agree. 
I didn't suggest. <laughs> Digital left main minimum lumen is a 5.6, uh, 9.6 square okay. millimeter. Sai Sai. Okay. Here, test example, proximal to test. Okay. Inflation, 8. I start with uh, conservatively. Eight, I don't like to, oh, still, yeah, 8, eight atmosphere. I don't like to lose the diagonal completely. 3 o. Okay, deflate. 3 o. 3 o. 8 atmosphere, under, under nominal pressure. Yeah, 살살살요. Okay, shoot. Yeah, still we have a hint of diagonal. Save the diagonal. Yeah. That's all I need to have. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so pull back, test. Anyway, at this time, the rupture point was sealed. Inflation. 14, 18, okay, okay, deflate. Uh, there may be some hematoma outside the stent, maybe yeah. high pressure will uh, push the hematoma to diagonal. Wish me luck. Oh, oh. <laughs> great, great. Wow, that's so great. Anyway, the hematoma resolves. Maybe you can have a diagonal back, and uh, we like to focus on the the left main apicodal. Oh, uh, epicranial uh, touch, number. Sorry. So maybe uh, ostium of the left main is too large, so it's not wise to cover all to the ostium, but uh, it surely cover. The, the left main flag, angel should be, sure. So, what do you think, the length? Length of the stand? 32, 24, 24. I, I prefer to have a, a 3.5, 3.5, 4.0. I like to dial it. The IVAS image, this is very large vessel, but the, just following the IVAS, we have a very large stand, uh, standing. The 3.5 and 4.0, I don't think it, uh, there will be uh, no difference in the clinical event. So, is it just uh, uh, clinical decision making? Okay. Rushing. Stent. Stent. Palizo. She wants to palizo. Okay. Dalla gorum chukchi joyo. Ne. Okay. Okay. Okay, Doctor Gwen, you have five minutes to go, so that the I think it's enough time for the stenting. Yes, five minutes. But, but don't uh, I be think too we much. have 45 minutes. <laughs> you just give me uh, 35 minutes. <laughs> There's my 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, over. Test. Pull out. Test. Too much overlap. Okay, no here. Problem. Again, eight, eight atmosphere. So we like we don't I don't like to uh, lose the circumflex, right? Oh, circumflex will not be dilated. <laughs> okay, deflate. <laughs> anyway, you can deal with it. Spider view. <laughs> it's okay, like that. You have to. We focused the early too much. Angel. Sure. Okay. So at this moment, actually, so complex, uh, uh, the left main is uh, that there is uh, underexpanded. So still, still, I like to uh, implant 12, 11, 11, 11, 11 atmosphere, nominal pressure. Okay, deflate. And I like to rewire the circumflex. Uh, talk. Test. Test. 
still we have a circumflex. Okay, talk. And uh, at this moment, uh, the, the wire undermining is uh, the inevitable. So the EBC recommends the part technique at this moment. So part for part, I don't have a time to part according to uh, Dr. Gu. So I like to use uh, just the wire prolapse technique, just like that. You can see. So wire prolapse technique. I'm sure this is inside of a uh, of a uh, main stenting. So I'm in a hurry. <laughs> Test. Okay. The wire forming is not so great. Uh, we lost the wire forming actually. Test. Hopefully, okay. Test? No. 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 Uh, we need to rewire. Need, uh, oh. Okay. Great. Okay. okay. And something young balloon? 3 for another balloon? And see? I'll push. The beauty of uh, rewiring like this is you don't need to remove the balloon. So, stay the balloon. Oh, no. it's cranial. Stent is underexpanded somewhere. Okay. Okay, inflation. 10, 12, 12. Okay. Yeah, deflation. Yeah, and they put the balloon there, spider. 3015. Yeah. 12 in the air. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Why is it go? Okay. Uh, uh. You want to do another balloon inflation, okay. right? Small balloon inflation with the circumflex first? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Because uh, they say this is a very good re-wrapping profile. <laughs> mm -hmm. So usually I don't use a 1.5 for uh, the, the cross the lesion. The, in cross technique, there, there's many times we need a we need a 1.5 balloon. So, uh, so balloon, 10, 12. Okay, deflation, and the pull back. Okay, high pressure, 14. I like to prepare the circumflex ostium more. 18. Okay, deflate. And the chumbi. And the finish is the good job. Should be to the eight. Eight. Uh, sometimes we don't need a kissing balloon before standing, but uh, this is my routine. I have to the ten. 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 Okay. Okay. Deflate. And uh, put the balloon again. So remove the ten. balloon. Giddy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 10, 24. 24. 3.5? 28 is better? Uh, no, I don't. This is 15. This is 15. The, the test of the blood test of the So we can measure the length of the lesion by IVUS, but the, the by ballooning is more direct. Or, or you can measure by the wire. I can pull back the wire. Okay, Andrew? This is a, a 30 millimeter. Okay? Oh, uh, yeah, 28. Yeah, we need 28. Right? 28? 24? 28. 20 is too, too long up to here. Yeah. 
The LED stent hasn't been post dilated yet. Do you want to do that before you place your circumflex stent? Post dilated for uh, LED? Yes. Okay, uh, actually, I do the post dilated uh, part technique uh, at the last, last uh, balloon. Okay, so, so uh, Dr. Bun, you almost spent the 45 minutes. The balloon. So, that the, can you please <laughs> summarize what you're going to do <laughs> from now on? Yeah. Uh, just, uh, I got, do I have a three minutes? So, I was allowed to give you only two minutes. One, one or two minutes. Uh, two minutes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> two minutes is enough. Because uh, the, the positioning of the circumflex stenting is uh, the key point of uh, this tap technique. Many times I have seen that the operators uh, protrude the uh, stent too much into the uh, circumflex. Jumanado. So I put the LA left main balloon here, and uh, you can see uh, classification. You can see still you can see a lower portion of the stent. So I pull it like this. Soju Margo. Okay, uh, but I think I I look, I I need to pull back one more one more millimeter. Soju Margo. Okay, you can see it? Yeah. So, inflation. Two minutes ago. Kind of a micro protrusion. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's ten, ten, one ten. Protrusion. Micro. Uh. Yes. Okay. Less than one minute. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. But this angle is actually not so uh, wide angle. Uh, yeah. The, the, con, uh, the it for for uh, left main, so it's uh, more tr protruded. I think inflation 18, 18, circumflex 18. So the frequently I uh, we found in IVAS study that deflation, circumflex osteum is not well uh, expanded, and uh, and inflation. Okay, Eight, ten, after ten. kissing. Twelve. Okay. Ten. Okay. okay. So can you can you give Deflation. us some final final comments of your okay. case? Good. Yeah. Final comment is uh, this is it. This is it. This is the end. So I like to show. I have like to show that the how convenient this stenting is. Okay. So stenting and kissing and fin you can finish the procedure even okay. here. So I the. Uh, the main advantage of test stenting is the most uh, predictable and easiest way okay. to decrease the perioperative peri MI. Okay, so thank you for uh, me here. really okay. uh, thank you for joining us. A nice case presentation. Why yeah. don't you take your last uh, last shot? Last shot, Angel. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All okay. right, why not? Go see that. What, ten seconds. Okay, Angel. Okay, okay. Yeah. Good. Good. You like that? Right. Right. Okay, thank you again. <laughs> right. Nice result.